Welcome to Through the Word, leading you on a journey through the entire Bible, one chapter at a time. Today, Chris Langham guides us through the Old Testament book of Genesis. Now to Pastor Chris. Genesis 10 today on Through the Word, also known as the Table of Nations. If you've ever been fascinated by people, by the incredible variety of peoples among the nations of the world, and wondered where all that variety came from, this is the place to start. Remember that Genesis is the book of beginnings, the origins movie for everything. Genesis 10 gives us the origins of nations and people groups of the world. Now the chapter is about 90% names, and mostly names you don't know. So if you just read through it and move on, it is not interesting. But dig in a little bit, and Genesis 10 will help us put together a virtual atlas of the original peoples and places of the earth. So let's start at verse 1. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. At first glance, this looks like another genealogy or family tree for Noah's three sons. That's true, but there's more to it. Sons become dads, who become clans, who become nations. As it says in verse 5, From these the coastland peoples spread in their lands, each with his own language, by their clans, in their nations. So the name of one man can become the name of a nation or an empire. It's hard to imagine, but that's really the only way for it to happen. From Noah's perspective, this chapter records where the few people went to. For us, it tells us where the many people came from. That's also known as anthropology, the study of human origins of peoples and people groups. If you trust the Bible, as I do, then Genesis 10 is a foundation stone for anthropology. For example, let's read verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. That's Japheth, who is generally agreed to be the father of the European nations, mostly Caucasian. Matching ancient names with modern nations, Gomer is Germany, Magog is Russia, Madai is Media and Persia, what we call Iran, Javan is Greece, and so on. Now this is not an exact science. The movement, expansion, and mixing of peoples and languages throughout history is complex, to say the least. Tracking it all is not simple, and I am not the anthropologist, so I can only pass on what others research. Plus, it can be oversimplifying to just match a name with a modern country, but it does give you a general idea of what ethnic groups came from where. So it's not always exact science, but it is science. Now, I know it's hard to imagine that Noah's three sons, plus their wives, turned into nations. And now we have seven billion people. But do a little math. Go dig up your old math book and find the formula for population growth. P times E to the RT power. I got my calculator out, so let's try it. P is initial population, R is growth rate, and T is time. Did I mention that I also teach math? Historical population growth rates fluctuate between 1% and 2% per year. That's R. Next up is time. The current evolutionary model says man has been here some 2 million years, but modern man only 200,000. Okay, try the formula for evolution first. Start with two people plus a minuscule growth rate of one-tenth of a percent. 200,000 years gives you a population number with 88 digits. 7 billion has 10 digits. 88 digits is approaching a Google we would literally not fit on the planet. Now, in the Bible model, take eight people and a low growth rate of just half a percent per year, and it takes 4,118 years to get 7 billion. A perfect match for the Bible timeline. Don't believe me? Get a calculator. Back in our table of nations, now that you know the timeline is realistic, let's take another look at who went where. The three sons of Noah are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They all started at Mount Ararat in modern-day Turkey, and their descendants moved out from there, though they didn't fully scatter until after the Tower of Babel. Japheth's descendants moved west and north, and populated Europe and Russia. However, Madai, the Medes and Persians, stopped in the Middle East. Ham's descendants moved south into parts of the Middle East and Africa. Reading verse 6, The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. So Cush is modern-day Ethiopia, Egypt, also called Mizraim, became the Egyptian empire. Put moved to modern-day Libya, and Canaan covered much of the Middle East, along the Mediterranean Sea, where Israel and Jordan are today. In verse 17, Canaan is the father of the Sinites, which some believe refers to Sino or China. 
That would suggest that the Asian populations are from Ham. Yet other scholars say Asians are from Shem, not Ham. So Japheth to Europe, Ham to Africa, and now Shem. Shem's descendants moved throughout the Middle East. In verse 22, the sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Shem include the Arab and Israelite peoples. Also, Aram was the father of the Assyrian Empire, which is why they spoke Aramaic, also the language of Jesus. Many of the names in Genesis 10 become significant later in the Bible. Ham's son Canaan comes up throughout the Israelite story. Japheth's son Magog is Russia, and it comes up repeatedly in end times prophecy. In verse 8, Nimrod was the founder of the very first kingdom mentioned, Babylon. We'll talk about that in chapter 11. Skipping down to verse 25, to a man named Peleg. In his days, the earth was divided. Two theories on that one. Either the earth's peoples were divided, as in Tower of Babel, or the earth's lands were divided, which may explain why the continents look like puzzle pieces, and how animals reach the world from the ark. Here's a good question. If Noah is everyone's granddaddy, where did all the races come from? First part of the answer, there is only one human race. Acts 17 says from one man he made every nation. So where do skin colors and other ethnic distinctions come from? The answer is evolution. Let me explain. There's more than one type of evolution. One is proven, the others are not. Microevolution includes adaptation, minor mutations within a kind, and survival of the fittest. This is all good science and totally kosher with the Bible. The mutations come from information that is already in the DNA. Then survival of the fittest kicks in to make the beneficial trait more prevalent. According to this model, the earliest humans had the DNA information available to make a variety of skin tones possible. When Ham's descendants moved into Africa, natural selection preferred darker skins. What happens in the DNA over generations is a loss of information, not an addition. Japheth's descendants up north did better with lighter skin, and darker skin DNA was lost over the years. That is microevolution. Macroevolution is another type. That happens when one kind becomes another kind of creature entirely, and new information is added to DNA, which quite accidentally creates new organs and complex systems. Macroevolution has never been observed and is 100% theory. Now, when you learn evolution in school, pay attention. All of the observable evidence that is presented is for microevolution, and that's all. They say that dogs make different dogs, and somehow that proves that wolves make whales and monkeys make humans. It is deceptive teaching and bad science. Speaking of DNA, a 2012 study showed that human DNA differences indicate a maximum of 5,000 years of diversification. Score two for the Bible timeline. As you read Genesis 10, you may want to find a map to match up with the names. And remember that the Lord is God of every nation. If you are fascinated by different peoples, remember that you may get to meet them. Revelation 7 says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Join us next time on Through the Word as we continue the journey, one chapter at a time. Start your own journey through the Bible with our web and mobile apps at throughtheword.org. Our apps are free and free to share. So tell your friends and take the journey together. If you'd like to help us reach more listeners, you can donate, share the app, order flyers, or pray for us, all at throughtheword.org or at facebook.com slash throughtheword. Chris Langham is the founder of Through the Word Ministries in Huntington Beach, California. You can find information and links for all our teachers on the website. And remember, faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the Word.